These Titans don't need to be different than what they've shown they're capable of. That's how we won last week. We were just us. We were just us playing free. We work hard all week, work hard all year. I know it's the playoff. I know it's a big game. I know it's more cameras. But be yourself, man. That's how we won last week, just doing us. They don't have to be superhuman. Trust me, it will take grit. Hit, fumbles. Casey got it out. Simmons is at the bottom of the pile fighting. Titan ball. <laughs> Punishing physicality. Relentless intensity and execution on every single snap. Mike Ravens, Titans, welcome to the championship. Titans and Ravens, winner to the AFC Championship. Here we go. To another week of the Mike Vrabel Show, sitting in for the head coach, John Robinson, because the Tennessee Titans are on their way to the AFC Championship game. The head coach is preparing, so we're talking football with the GM, and certainly we start off talking about a big win over the Baltimore Ravens, 28-12 to this past weekend. Lots of memories for Titans fans from this victory, including a lot of Titans fans who made their way to the Charm City to see their team take the W. Titan Man here. We have invaded Baltimore and we're taking over the tin roof. Come on out. On Friday night and Saturday, hundreds of Titans fans gathered at the Baltimore Tin Roof location. Titans Radio's flagship station, 104.5 The Zone, broadcast live and got the fans ready to go. There was even a visit from John Robinson which thrilled Titans fans. Many of the people actually drove to Baltimore from all over Tennessee, but also from Mississippi, from Alabama, from Florida, and all places in between. When the game was over and the Titans were victorious, the legion of two-tone blue road warriors bask in the glory of shocking the football world within the walls of the NFL's Purple Palace. The Titans rewarded their traveling fans with one of the great wins in franchise history for a second week in a row. Back in Nashville, Titans fans gathered to support the team in a big way as well at the George Jones, at the Nashville Underground, at 6th and Peabody. Wow, the energy, the passion, Saturday night was magical for Titans fans in the Charm City, in the Music City, and many other places all over the country and even around the world. Exciting to see all those Titans fans so excited. John Robinson, you were a Tennessean. You stated four years ago that you understood what moments like that meant to Titans fans. As you see it, as you feel it, what jumps out to you about them? Uh, just excited and, and proud and extremely appreciative of their support, staying with us, going on the road with us, traveling to you know, a pretty hostile environment uh, for, for two weeks in a row uh, up to Gillette and then, and then over to, to Baltimore. And just super stoked that, that they're with us and we were able to come away with a win. It's not talk. Fans mean something to a football team. Explain what those fans mean to Mike Vrabel, the staff, the team, and to everybody on the football side of the Titans. Yeah, I mean, it's awesome. You know, um, after the game when, when you know, we kind of had it in, in, in grasp there, when Derek was able to take a victory lap, if you will, all the Titans fans had came down in the lower bowl uh, once the Ravens fans got out of Dodge. Um, just so cool, and probably a, 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 the coolest moment was when we came back and we, uh, we were pulling back in here to St. Thomas Sports Park uh, at 3 in the morning. There was about 80 to 100 people out there waving flags and yelling. Um, I got goosebumps again, and um, it's, it's just so, so awesome. A lot of the people that we met in Baltimore and a lot of the people that you saw here are Titans season ticket members. They congregate in different ways and enjoy the experience even more. So it gives us a chance to mention you can become a Titans season ticket member. People standing by right now as we speak on a Tuesday evening, 615-565-4200 to join 
the parade of two-tone blue Titans fans who are enjoying this great run to the AFC Championship game. When we come back, we take a look at the six biggest plays from the win over the Ravens. That's next on the Mike Vrabel Show. John Robinson sitting in for Mike Vrabel tonight. We'll still call it Vrabel's six-pack. The six biggest plays from the Titans' victory over the Ravens. And it started with defense. The Ravens were on the move. They looked like the number one offense in the NFL. And the Titans make a play. Yeah, great play here by, uh, by a lot of people on, on this play. Uh, starts up front with, with Jeffrey Simmons. He's getting double teamed, but he's able to, to split those guys, get some pressure on uh, on Lamar, force him to throw it just high enough. It kind of tips off the, the, the tight end's hands there. Great job by, by KB reacting to it, uh, coming down with a huge play for us to flip the momentum. And look at that sideline. That tells you all you need to know about what a spark it was to the Titans. You intercept the presumptive MVP, run it back 33 yards, get a 15-yard penalty, and then we go to play number two at the end of the next drive. The Titans eight plays, 35 yards, and this touchdown. Yeah, great great play call here. Kind of a scheme play there in man coverage. Um, we've got a bunch set over there. Uh, it's a really good release by Corey to kind of delay Carr from being able to jump right on Janu and, and cover him. A great protection by the line. They kind of mush rush us in there. We do a good job of kind of building the wall. Great throw uh, by Tanny Hill and an unbelievable catch by Janu to get a hand on it, tip it back to himself and stay in. Ruled a catch, ruled a touchdown. Titans go up seven to nothing. Ravens come back down the field. They get to their own 45. They have fourth and one. They choose to go, and they've done that a lot this year. They don't make it. Next play, Titans go deep. Yeah, shot play after a, after a huge shot, um, stop by our defense. Um, one play, it's a really, really great uh, play action pass. Great route by, by Khalif uh, to stem uh, Humphrey around there, kind of spin him around. Great throw by Tannehill. Uh, line did a good job giving him time and an unbelievable concentration catch uh, by Khalif, e eerily similar to the one he made in, in Indy. So a huge play force uh, to put us up 14 points. Great throw by Tannehill. Outstanding. 14 nothing at that point. The game's 14 to six at halftime. It's still 14 to six as we go to the third. Titans get a stop. Derrick Henry breaks a long run, and then it's third and goal at the one. Yeah, just when you think he's going to run it, he, he throws it. Um, we put Marcus in there. He motions out. Um, he's actually uncovered um, as well. But it's it's a great it's a great action by 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 Derrick. Um, really good job by Corey because he's usually kind of going in there to dig out a linebacker. He slips up. Uh, great jump and great throw and a super catch by by Corey. 21 to 6 at this point and it was eerily quiet at M&T Bank Stadium and then after a turnover the Titans come back with another big third quarter play Tannehill to pay dirt. Yeah an option play you know we, we, we kind of thought that they were they were going to blitz us there and, and they did they sent pressure um, it's a really good job by Conklin on the right side sealing it off there great job by Nate Davis to get around there and kind of kick Ford out of there to give to give Ryan a, a lane to run through Derek pulls the support safety out with his, you know, with him being the pitch guy. Just a well-executed play and another chance to get a touchdown there in the red zone. Was he going to run all the way? Well, I mean, he's got an option to pitch it there. If, if but you know, Thomas does a pretty good job um, of taking Derek out of it, and, and Ryan sees it and he sees a hole in the crease, and he puts his head down and, and digs his way in there. Didn't realize until that angle what a great job Nate Davis did. You said it, but outstanding play by the rookie right guard. Then the defense seals the deal. Titans up 28 to six. The Ravens would eventually cut it to 28 to 12, but another great defensive play, Kenny Vaccaro. Yeah, that's a single receiver over here to, to um, Lamar's left. Um, and, and Kenny does a great job. It, it, we're in zone coverage, but he, he basically run, he runs out there and undercuts one. Um, Lamar doesn't see him, it's too late. He's let the ball go. And, and Kenny with an outstanding reactionary pick and, and a huge, Another huge turnover for us, so, so key in these games uh, with just a great play for our defense. Three turnovers for Lamar Jackson in the ball game. Titans win it 28 to 12. When we come back, the Bridgestone clutch performance play of the game with 98 and 99 combining. Stay with us.
Bridgestone clutch performance play of the game. Titans lead 21 to six. They need a big defensive play to basically salt it away. And here comes Jarrell Casey. Yeah, it's a great rush by, by Jarrell. He starts outside on Stanley, comes inside um, and, and forces Lamar to kind of slide out. I think he thinks he's going to get away from him, but it's an outstanding by, job by Casey to stay on his feet and kind of U-turn, if you will, and come back. Nice, nice strip sack. And then Big Jeff is there to pounce on it. You can see what Stanley tries to get it, but uh, Simmons grabs it, got it tighter than a ham at Christmas. <laughs> and um, just a really, 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 really huge play for us. Another turnover, uh, got the ball back down in the red zone. And let's face it, on those fumbles, you either win or you don't, and Simmons wins. That He did. And it's, I mean, that ball's loose in there. And those guys, if you've never been in the bottom of a pile, uh, like that you're fighting and doing everything you can to get the ball and you weren't you weren't getting away from Big Jeff. Titans go on to score another touchdown and that's the momentum that the Titans need to get home with the victory in Baltimore and that's our Bridgestone clutch performance play of the game. Now time for our Delta Dental guess the Titan. John Robinson two of three on the year. Let's see if he can go to three out of four. John Robinson, can you guess this Titan from his picture as a young person? Here we go. Um, Ooh. You know what? I I think I'm gonna I'm gonna double down. Last week I went Khalif Raymond. I'm gonna I'm gonna go. I, I was wrong. I'm Won gonna Khalif go Khalif Raymond I, last week. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go Khalif again. He's gonna go Khalif Raymond. Show us Khalif Raymond. Ah, there it is. Giddy up. Three out of four. Not bad. Not bad. Outstanding. And what about Khalif Raymond? He is becoming a favorite of Titans fans all over the place. Yeah, though. I mean, that's the one thing. You know, our scouting department, our pro scouts, did a great job. He's got it. He kind of bounced around. He had been on practice squads. He played at Holy Cross. The one thing he had was speed. You know, he needed to refine some of his route technique and his detail and improve as a punt returner. Um, he did that on our practice squad, and he earned the opportunity to come up to uh, the 53-man roster and then earned a spot on the 46-man sp uh, roster. And he's just done a great job, and I'm so proud of him. When we come back, Amy Wells is back, and she's got our Geico gladiator of the game. Let's talk defense with Rashawn Evans. Titans Amy and Rashawn next. Welcome back to the Mike Vrabel Show. I'm Amy Wells, joined by our Geico gladiator of the game, Rashawn Evans. Rashawn, you're getting ready to play in the AFC Championship game. Have you let yourself think about the gravity of what that game means, or can you not even go there? You really don't have a lot of time, to be honest with you. So many different things that, you know, that are going on all at once. You know, you got media, you got, you know, football, having to learn different schemes and all these other things. So. You, you really don't have a lot of time, but, you know, that's the fun part about it. You get another chance and another opportunity to be able to play on a big stage, and, you know, it's exciting. We've seen this Titans defense in the last two games have goal line stands and fourth down stands and interceptions, big sacks, forced fumbles. We've seen it all. What is it about the way that this Titans defense is built that has made you so perfect for these situations? I would say it falls a lot on the chemistry, really. you got to group of guys that are willing to, you know, play and, and, you know, really put the, you know, everything on the line to be able to win a game. Just the fact that, you know, when we get in, in that locker room, uh, you know, guys, we truly act as if we've been knowing each other for years. And, you know, I feel like that carries on to the field. Being able to play in these big games and stuff like that, we it's no longer us, you know, just verbally communicating. You you can almost feel, you know, what a guy, you know, is trying to communicate with you or when he's when a big play is about to happen, you kind of can feel it. So I think that's the magic, you know, within the defense. They say that the playoffs are a whole different brand of football. What have you noticed in the two playoff games that you've been a part of? I would say it's been very physical. I feel like the physicality is at, at, its, at its peak at this point. You know, everybody has to truly be on all cylinders, which comes with a lot of, lot of pressure. And, you know, that, but that's the reason why you play this great game. You get into situations like this that bring out, you know, the, the greater part of you. The last two teams that you guys were able to overcome and were able to beat in the playoffs were high scoring offenses. What has been the recipe to really containing those teams? Just really staying true to your game, not allowing 
quarterbacks to change the dynamics of how you play. Everything that you've done at this point to get you to this point, you know, you want to continue to keep doing that. And you want to try to at least stay, you know, to your routine and all the things that you do as much as possible. As the Titans continue throughout this tournament, the Titans fan base continues to grow and get louder and louder. Do you guys see all of the excitement that this team is generating right now? Oh, no doubt. You know, even when we come back from our games, we'll fly in, drive to the facility. We see fans staying 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the morning, still cheering with the same energy as if the game was still going. I feel like that makes us feel really good, knowing that we got fans that are truly there for us. Going on these, these road games is in these hostile environments, you know, you, you're going into environments where there's 100,000 plus people that, that are wanting you to lose. So just being able to have that to be able to come back to is it's it's an amazing feeling. Everyone has a favorite Steve McNair moment, but mine was in Houston on December 21st, 2003. Steve had a cracked bone spur in his left ankle and he was in a lot of pain but he was trying to help the Titans get into the playoffs, so he played. The Texans were only in their second year of existence, and they had not won a big game yet. But they were about to win one, as the Titans had completely blown a game that they had controlled and trailed 24 to 20. At that moment, NRG Stadium was so loud that I could barely hear my broadcast partner, Pat Ryan, even through our headphones and our radio booth was shaking from the noise. But McNair was undaunted, taking the Titans down the field, mostly completing passes to Drew Bennett. At the end, it came down to one play. McNair has tied, throws left corner for Bennett in the end zone. Touchdown! Touchdown, Titans! Bennett did it again! McNair on fourth and 10 shows why he's the man. It's time for the Titans' keys to success. General Manager John Robinson sitting in for Mike Vrabel, and he knows what the team has to do if they are going to win the AFC Championship this weekend in Kansas City. Let's take a look at these keys, beginning with Kansas City offense, and you just can't give up the big plays, John. Yeah, they've got so many explosive players on that side of the ball, starting with the quarterback. Um, the tight end, Kelsey, is outstanding. You've got Hill, who's outstanding. The back, Damon Williams, is a good player. The line's good. Um, Sammy Watkins is an explosive player. You've got to make them go the long way. You've got to make them earn every single inch. Uh, can't give up chunk plays. One thing you've done well the last two weeks is even when a guy's caught a pass, you've just tackled him. And you just live to fight another down. And that's been a key against New England and against Baltimore tougher this week because of their speed yeah that's I mean that's what it is those you know 10 yard catches can turn into 30 yard gains and become an explosive play uh, if you if you don't get them on the ground we've got to rally we've got to swarm and we've got to do a really really good job of tackling all right let's stay with the defense right now and let's talk about red zone defense something the Titans have done well in the playoffs got to keep doing it yeah I mean we did a great job of it against uh, Baltimore um, I think they were one for four down in, in the red zone. We've got to make them ki try to kick field goals. Um, they can gain yards throughout the course uh, of the field, but when it gets down there um, to that touchdown area, we've, we've got to come up with stops and, and make them trot the field goal team out there. What's the key to good red zone defense for the Tennessee Titans? Well, it's, it's, it's stopping the run, doing a good job of tackling, um, rushing and covering. You've got to put pressure on, on, this, on this quarterback. Um, and, and we've got to stay on our guys or disguise his own coverage, ever how we're playing it. Um, but we've got to be really, really sound in the red zone. Now, this is one that Coach Vrabel has given us throughout the year, and you have too. And we've gotten teased a little bit about it, but I think Titans fans are beginning to understand the significance of scoring touchdowns. This team has done it better than any team in the NFL, and it has been the key to offensive success, finishing drives in the end zone, not kicking field goals. Sure. I mean, when you've got a team like Kansas City who, who scores points, you know, hopefully we get those stops that we talked about. Um, but we've, we've, got to, we've got to match score for score with those guys. We can't kick – I mean, we, we want to make our field goals when we have sure. to kick them. Um, but we, we've got to get those four extra points because uh, it just becomes so – uh, so critical, you know, as you inch closer to that fourth quarter. And it was huge in the game in Baltimore because you're up 14 to nothing instead of six to nothing. It totally changed the dynamic of the night. Yeah, it changes the play caller's call sheet on the other side. 
Um, he realizes he's got to start calling plays to try to score more quickly because you start to run out of possessions. And, and you realize if you don't score, if you've only got, say, seven possessions left and you're down three touchdowns, you've got to score on at least three of those to try to, try to get a tie. And um, it's just so paramount to score touchdowns down there to, for a lot of reasons. What's the challenge at playing in Arrowhead Stadium? Well, it's loud. I mean, they're, they're, they're a, they're a, they do a great job you know, with their home stadium, making it loud. Um, you know, you saw what they were able to do against the Texans. They were down and they rallied. Um, it took one one score, and it, the electricity came right back into that to that stadium. Uh, so we've got to do a good job uh, uh, of playing defense. You know, not allowing them to score and, and getting up on them and keeping our foot on the gas. Bottom line, just keep doing what you're doing. Find a way to have more points than they do at the end of the game, Mike. I love it. I love it. Remind you. Kickoff for Sunday's game is 2.05. That's a 2.05 kickoff from Arrowhead. Titans Radio on the air on 104.5 The Zone. Noon is when we will start Titans Countdown. It's going to be a great weekend. For John Robinson sitting in for Mike Vrabel, I'm Mike Keith. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.